Welcome to the Red Dirt Road Podcast. Got a solo pod today. Breaking down one of Brooks and Dunn's number one singles on the country chart. She used to be mine. Bit of a somewhat forgettable song, even though it's reached number one and it is still a very good song, but a bit older than some of the other songs being at, you know, just their second album <clears throat> and not a really unique name. She used to be mine. So, you know, a lot of people probably have forgotten about this song. It actually reached number one on the country charts along with that ain't no way to go. The two from this album that reached number one and going to, going to get into the song, but yeah, I honestly just had kind of forgotten about it a little bit. Um, I listened to their music all the way through many times, but yeah, going to get into the song. It's the fifth song off of Hard Working Man, right in the middle of this album. 356 in length, written by Ronnie Dunn, sang by... You know, Ronnie Dunn has got the the lead vocals on this. Not sure, you know, maybe Kix Brooks comes in for some background vocals in the uh, in the chorus. I'm sure on in a live show he'll he'll do that a little bit, but I don't really hear much. Peaked at number one, like I said, on the country charts in U.S. and Canada, and actually, man, this is a pretty pretty successful song. Finished in 1993, according to wikipedia at number 69 in the u.s country charts and number 35 on the canadian country charts wow so this for our canadian listeners this is the number 35 country song of that year not that it's not that it's a bad song at all but you just would not think of this song as being that big of a of a song as far as for all the songs that were released that year, or I guess were, you know, popular that year. Pretty wild. Wish I could have gotten a guest on for this. I usually like to get guests on, especially for the, the bigger songs, the singles, but it just uh, is the way it worked out. We're actually got, this is actually a morning podcast right now, kind of late morning, just before 11 o'clock Eastern time. And kind of kind of behind actually gonna get try to get this podcast out today. And then later in the afternoon, we got another Brooks and Dunn song episode that we're gonna be doing. So got <clears throat> actually doing two today. So a little bit behind. We've been kind of busy lately. But here's my breakdown of the song. So it's got this intro, a 20, roughly 20 second ballad type of an intro. First verse, which, you know, that's about maybe five seconds longer than than most of the intros. First verse, Ronnie Dunn, he's singing about a man who's seeing his woman dancing, quote, arm in arm with somebody new, presumably on the dance floor of some bar, honky tonk, like most, uh, a lot of Brooks and Dunn songs. He says, quote, I got my best smile on, but it's no disguise. It don't hide the pain in these eyes. And to me, that kind of jumped out very reminiscent. I'm sure they took a lot of that, uh, a lot of influence from Hank Williams. You know, one of his, one of his heartache songs, cold, cold heart, your cheating heart. So lonesome, or I'm so lonesome. I could cry. Those were, you know, just a few of his more popular ones that I had just thought of that, you know, when it's saying like, it don't hide the pain in these eyes. That's, I'm, I'm sure they were thinking of an old Hank Williams song when they were writing this. Been listening to a lot of Hank Williams recently. So, man, that guy. A lot of great songs come from him. So the chorus comes in, says that uh, the man, uh, the man sings that he, quote, did her so wrong for so long, turned her back on my love, turned my back on her love. Now she's long gone. Actually, kind of almost there, there's a there's a song from Brooks and called uh, I think it's called uh, How Long Gone. That, cor- that made me think of that. Anyways, the chorus ends with Ronnie Dunn. Uh, 
he's singing uh, uh, the the name of the song. She used to be mine. And really, it's like the most perfect way to sing this song, uh, this line of the song. She used to be mine. I love it. It's that classic Ronnie Dunn. I mean, it's it's not a, a difficult line to sing. He's not really reaching those high notes as, as much as, you know, other parts of the chorus. But I don't know. He just he sings it in the most perfect way. He's got this sort of, sort of voice. It's got this. I don't know. I don't even know some kind of a, a twang at this. But but it's it's got a draw. And, you know, only he can can sing it like this. But it's straight to the point. She used to be mine. That's kind of how it wraps up this chorus. It's got a little short instrumental breakdown with the fiddle coming in. And then the second verse, it talks about the man in the story struggling, quote, to keep a hurt look off of my face when he sees, quote, the lucky man taking my place. So just kind of continues what I was already talking about. And then you got the second chorus, a short guitar breakdown, and then the third chorus. So kind of your typical structure, a little bit of uh, a lot of Brooks and Dunn songs, but a little bit longer. It's almost four minutes long. So, you know, about, you know, maybe 30 seconds to a minute longer than some of these other ones that they have that only have two verses because it's kind of a slower song. So some of my opinions, like I said earlier, you know, it's it's kind of an, a forgotten, kind of often slept on Brooks and Dunn song. I would have to say out of their number one songs, you know, this probably is one of the more forgettable ones. Not, and I'm not saying it's bad. It just, she used to be mine. It's not a very, not, not a very unique name. I mean, if you were to just say that title to someone that was a you know listener of Brooks and Dunn and didn't say the artist, I'm not sure if they would know that that's from Brooks and Dunn. Whereas, you know, some of these other ones are a little bit more unique name. Uh, clearly, was popular at the time. You know, charting at the year end charts and the number one overall, but. You know, I, I don't think this song really has as much buzz these days. I don't really remember ever hearing it on the radio. And, you know, you can tell it's a solid song, though. Uh, it doesn't really have that signature Brooks and Dunn kind of punchy, funky sound, which kind of made them unique. You know, they took that neo-traditional or traditional country music and kind of gave it a punch, gave it a kick. It also doesn't really have the, I mean, you know, I mean, Ronnie Dunn's vocals in this are phenomenal as usual, but I wouldn't say this is really his most difficult song to sing. You know, if you were a, if you were a decent singer, I think that you could pull this song off. There's some of his other songs, My Maria and That Ain't No Way to Go. Um, he's got many others that uh, I feel like utilize his vocal range a little bit more not that he does a bad job in here but so i i don't think that this song really stands out to me a ton and and also with the lyrics i would say you know they're 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 fine they're simple they're effective but you know if you listen to our last episode on chattahoochee there's a lot of little nuggets in that about georgia and where alan jackson grew up and any great any great uh, song with the lyrics, you can kind of go in and and uh, pick apart the song, and and there'll kind of be reasons that they use certain words or certain phrases that uh, you know you kind of have to do some external research to figure out. All right, what what does this mean? Why did they use this here? This song doesn't really have that. It's a little bit more vanilla, but I mean it's 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 kind of to the point. Yeah, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, that's basically the last thing I was going to say is that can use some more interesting kind of specific words. I, I often say on this podcast, the more specific 
of the lyrics kind of the that's often an indicator of how good the lyrics are which i would say this is probably not one of those but maybe it's kind of intentional to be that way she used to be mine isn't really that specific in and of itself so i'm not sure maybe that's what they were going for but a solid song nonetheless it's not going to be my number one song in this album um it's i i don't really know actually where it's going to be it's going to be of course higher than hard working man really as i go through this album i'm not sure if any song so far is going to be that that we've done so far is going to be below hard working man uh we still got some more on this album but i'm not sure where this song's going to be that's there's uh you know re- going through this album again and reviewing stuff i'd say this album is stronger than i had initially thought you know it doesn't have as many number one hits it's got two whereas the last one i believe had four so it doesn't have quite as many hits but it's got some good ones i mean this one was a number one hit and man i don't even think it's going to be in my my top two at the end of the album so that's going to be it for today. Make sure you're, you know, go, go check us out on, uh, on social media. I'm on, I guess I'll shout out my Instagram, uh, the marsh Mani- at the marsh maniac or you can search my name, I guess. So there you go. That's going to be it. And we will see you guys next time.